This is a production of Cornell University. Um, and I'm excited to present to you the work I've been doing here at Cornell, looking at how to use um, a combination of fertilizer rates and insecticide application frequency um, for management of onion drips on onion. And onions are an important crop both globally as well as locally. Um, so they're the third largest produced fresh market vegetable in the United States. And New York is a state that really leads that production here in the US. In New York, most onions that we're growing are of yellow cooking varieties, and we tend to grow them in muck soils, uh, which provide a really unique growing environment. These soils are incredibly high in organic matter and can be up to 80% organic matter. Um, and what that does is that it allows these soils to really hold on re and retain nutrients throughout the growing season and then provide a lot of nutrient availability as plants proceed through their growing season. And in this high organic matter environment, onion thrips can really thrive on these onion plants. And onion thrips are one of the most economically significant onion pests globally. Um, and they feed by rasping away chlorophyll on plants, which reduces photosynthetic potential. They can have really rapid population growth, as well as contributing to a number of plant pathogens, including bacterial bulb rots, iris yellow spot virus, and also fungal pathogens such as stemphilium leaf blight. And the combination of their feeding and plant pathogen exacerbation can reduce onion yield in New York by up to 36%. Management of onion thrips is very challenging. There's really few economically viable options. So options like biological control tend not to work well enough to prevent economic losses, um, cultural tactics such as laying straw down to prevent uh, pupil emergence work well at small scales but don't make any economic sense at the large scales that onions are typically produced at. And so we end up really relying on insecticides to manage this pest. And growers in New York typically do about six to eight sprays throughout the growing season uh, typically in July and August. Those are the months that we see the greatest thrips densities on onion and that onion plants are most vulnerable to damage. Um, and one way that the NALT lab has been working on trying to reduce insecticide usage is through the adoption of action thresholds. Um, and so here we're looking to start applying insecticides whenever thrips exceed one larva per leaf, because larvae are the stage causing the most damage. And by spraying, whenever they reach that action threshold, we're able to prevent them from exceeding the economic injury level of 2.2 larvae per leaf, averaged over the course of the entire growing season. So our goal is to keep them below 2.2 throughout the growing season to prevent um, economic losses. And this, these programs have been adopted particularly strongly in Western New York, but also in some parts of Central New York, in part because of a really strong effort by Cornell Cooperative Extension. Um, so the woman in plaid on the right hand of this picture, uh, Christy Hochting, is an extension educator focused on onions in Western New York that does a very intensive weekly scouting program in both Western and Central New York looking at weed pressure, insect pest pressure, and uh, pathogen pressure uh, throughout the growing season, puts together a detailed report and emails it to growers, and then works with them through um, pesticide recommendations as needed to manage whatever pests they're facing in their onion fields. Um, and our growers shown in this picture, um, this is a group of growers in Western New York that received an IPM Excellence Award last year because of their efforts to work with Christy, um, let her scout in their fields, pay attention to her reports and follow recommendations, as well as their efforts to let um, research trials happen on their farms to help better support IPM programs in onion. 
And so these action threshold programs are great, but we're still struggling to come up with a tactic to have another tool in the toolbox that isn't an insecticide or that helps work in tandem with them. We just need more tools in this IPM toolbox. And so one tactic that's gotten a lot of attention is looking at fertilizer application rates and seeing if reducing them can help manage uh, thrips feeding. So when less nitrogen is applied, it's been shown that onion thrips can be up to 70% less abundant in some cases. And this can have an added benefit by reducing the incidence of bacterial bulb rots. So both thrips and bulb rots are really thriving when there's sufficient nitrogen for them in these systems. Um, so there can be a lot of benefits to reducing uh, nitrogen and other uh, nutrients in the system. Um, but this was all shown in soils that are not muck soils. Um, and so some of you may know Ashley Leach, who's an alum from the NALT lab, who did a lot of fertilizer work with onion thrips. And when she investigated reducing fertilizer in muck soils in Western New York, she did not see this benefit translate for thrips. She did not find any effect of nitrogen on thrips densities. But one exciting thing she did find is that onion yield seemed to do okay in these reduced fertilizer rates. So she found lower yield with no fertilizer applied, but as long as some nitrogen was applied, onion yield was equivalent across the different rates she looked at. So there still seems to be some promise and it's worth looking at this a little bit closer, uh, which brings me to the questions that I've been working on which is if we look at reducing overall fertilizer rate, so rather than individual nutrients, if we reduce fertilizer overall, and if we scale up from small plot research trials up to um, more of a commercial field scale, how does fertilizer reduction perform? And can it be effectively paired with action threshold programs? So my specific objectives were to look at testing the effect of reduced NPK fertilizer rates and action threshold spray program on onion thrips densities and onion yield in commercial onion fields and hypothesized that as we reduce NPK fertilizer, we would see fewer onion thrips. So hoping that with the P and K thrown in, we'd see more of an effect than with nitrogen. Um, and expected to see yield results similar to what Ashley found, where zero might not do so well, but reduced and full would hopefully achieve equivalent onion yield. Um, and with spray program, because of the success of it so far, had hypothesized we'd see similar numbers of thrips in the action threshold and weekly treatments, and also similar yield in the, these two treatments. So I replicated this in 2019 in four commercial fields in a pretty large area of muck in Western New York, about halfway between Rochester and Buffalo, and compared the fertilizer that growers would typically apply, half of that fertilizer rate and then no fertilizer rate. And the full rate for nitrogen was typically within the recommended range by Cornell for growing onions in muck soil, but the half rates were typically below that range. Um, for the phosphorus and potassium that were going out as part of this fertilizer mixture, both full and half rates tended to fall within the recommended range for onions in muck. And so what this looked like in a field is I had three nine by 46 meter plots in each grower's field, and each of these three plots received a different fertilizer rate. And the insecticide program looked like a, in these three plots, the entire plot as well as the area surrounding it, which was also part of an onion field, was sprayed whenever thrips exceeded one larva per leaf. So the grower made this decision based on Christy Hopeding's scouting reports and then decided to spray their entire field, including our plots. If there was a week where they were not going to spray because thrips were below threshold, then we had these smaller subplots shown in blue where we would come in and apply a spray. So these smaller plots got sprayed every single week during the main thrip season 
um, whereas the outside of that was only sprayed when the grower felt it was needed. And all of these sprays, both our choices as well as the grower's choices, followed a Cornell recommended sequence that accounts for rotating active ingredients to slow resistance, um, paying attention to sort of a cost versus efficacy ratio for these products, and then any pre-harvest intervals that need to be accounted for. And in each of these weekly spray subplots, there was a sampling transect that I used, um, as well as a paired transect outside of the plots in the action threshold program. So four transects in each fertilizer plot, uh, where I counted thrips, both adults and larvae weekly throughout July and August, and then also assessed yield using 100 onions from each transect, 30 of which I cut open to look for bulb rot and use this to adjust for marketable yield because um, rotten onions are not marketable. Luckily, only 1% of onions had rot last season, so there was pretty good onion quality coming out of these plots. Um, so starting with results of looking at how fertilizer and spray program affected thrips, we saw no significant effect of fertilizer on thrips densities. We did see a significant effect of spray program and no interaction between the two. So in this figure, I'm going to show the average number of thrips larvae per leaf in the two different spray programs averaged across the three fertilizer treatments. Um, and what I found is that there were significantly more thrips larvae on plants that received an action threshold program where they got somewhere between three to six sprays over the course of the season than in the weekly subplots where they got seven to eight sprays. Um, but if we pair this up with looking at densities that would matter, we see that um, even in those action threshold plots with a greater density of thrips, we're still keeping them below the economic injury level. So this was still successful even with more thrips um, and allowed us to use between two and five fewer sprays in the action threshold programs. Um, and this ended up translating to no effect on yield, which is good. It means we were definitely below that economic injury level. Um, and so with onion yield saw no effect of fertilizer, spray program, or interaction between those two. So all of these bars ended up being a pretty similar uh, marketable yield, even in that zero fertilizer treatment, which was surprising to me. Um, so to summarize what I found in 2019, thrips densities were equal at all three fertilizer rates, and yield was also equal across these three fertilizer rates, even in the zero fertilizer treatment. Um, so there's definitely opportunity for growers to reduce fertilizer usage without having a cost to yield. The action threshold programs controlled thrips successfully below economically acceptable levels, which is good. They're still working for these growers. Um, and yield was also equivalent bet between the two different spray programs, regardless of fertilizer rate. Um, so we were able to reduce insecticide by two to five fewer sprays in these plots, which is great. Um, and so that's just one year of data, and we're now um, partway into our 2020 growing season, and I'm excited to be repeating this at 10 sites in Western and Central New York. So this is the first time that as a lab, we're addressing this outside of the Elba muck region in Western New York. I'm hoping this greater replication will give us a better idea of what's going on. Um, and 2019 was relatively cool and wet, and this year so far has been hotter and drier, which should give me a lot of good data to work with because thrips really do well in hot, dry conditions. This photo on the right is showing um, plants that have really started to turn white from high thrips densities. Um, so this will really put both the action threshold and fertilizer questions to the test this year. Um, and I'm also working on sampling, sampling soil more often and earlier in the season to try to see, um, we know we're putting out different fertilizer rates, but we don't really know 
how that's translating to affect plants or thrips because muck soils are so unique. So I'm hoping that the use of more soil sampling will give us a better idea of what is happening in those plots. So I want to acknowledge the USDA for funding, um, our really fantastic collaborating growers, and the Nalt Lab for counting so many thrips. And if I have time, would be happy to take questions. This has been a production of Cornell University, on the web at cornell.edu.